Welcome to the Self-Awareness and Self-Compassion Podcast, formerly known as the Full Spectrum Feeling Podcast. I'm your host, Blaise Schwaller, life coach, mom, and former tattoo artist. I help people heal their past, speak their truth, and love the lives that they're living now. Join me here every week for conversations on how to live an imperfect but fully engaged life that embraces all the feels so that you can stretch into your best life while enjoying the you that's here right now. Hello and welcome back to Full Spectrum Feeling. This is Blaze and I want to talk this week about timing and what is the big deal with timing. And the big deal for me is realizing that my timeline and other people's timelines are not the same. Now I know that's such an obvious statement. Of course, everyone's timeline for what they want to happen, when they want to happen is different. However, I have noticed that I have a lot of judgment around timing, but particularly when I adopt someone else's timeline for things that I want or that I think I want, it can really get to me much faster than if I don't hit my own goals in a timely fashion. Also, have you ever noticed that when you say the same word like 15 times, you start to wonder if it's even a word? (laughs) Timing, timing, timing. Ah, so what brings this up for me is I started my year. I set some big goals for myself in my business. And I had actual numbers that I wanted to hit where I'm like, I want to reach out to this many people. I'd like to have this many yeses. I want to be working with this many people. I want to have this much income. How am I going to do it? Which, which way am I going to make that happen? And over the course of several months, I felt for myself that I wanted to slow it down. I actually enjoyed working with fewer people than I anticipated. (laughs) It's weird. No, I like working with a lot of people, but I didn't need my number to be 50 people. Like I thought I needed to work with hundreds of people in order to I don't know, satisfy my ego or my goals or whatever it was. I thought that more people is more numbers and that is better. And we've talked about this before too, the the equating more with better. But what I realized for myself was that it wasn't. Working with more people was just working with more people. And pushing for a number just for the sake of the number felt really, really bad. And it made me stop pushing and I didn't want to do it anymore. So where this comes up is that I was asked in one of my groups to set a higher goal or higher numbers goal for reaching out and having consultations than I normally would have set for myself. So I had an idea that like, oh, if I reach out to 100 people or even 80 people in the month and I hear back from half of them and, you know, half or less than the half of those actually want to talk to me seriously that feels amazing. I'm so excited about that. Let's do it. But what I noticed happen is that when it became an issue that the challenge was not to reach out to that many people, but to actually have that many phone calls or sales calls with them, I felt like crap. And it became about the numbers and not about the actual interaction with the people anymore. So then I I felt gross about it and I didn't want to do it. And I wondered how many other times have I done this in my life? Have I set myself up for a pace of growth that felt good or an interaction that I enjoyed that I wanted to do more of and get better at that felt good? And then someone else had their input about what they thought would be a better number for me or a better goal. And I went, oh, okay, I should do that. And I pushed myself and I tried to do it. And then it feels like crap. Now there's another aspect to this that came up for me, which was that I thought pushing myself wasn't actually the problem. For a while, I wondered, I was like, am I upset because I'm not in my comfort zone and I'm, I'm trying to, you know, reach out to even more people to try to get even more phone calls than before. And that's just not comfortable because I haven't done it yet. So I sat with it for a little bit and I thought about it and I went into my feelings and these feelings were turmoil and they were not, they were not tasty feelings, my friends. (laughs) I was not feeling good about any of it. So I went, all right, there's something more going on than just not being comfortable about making the calls because I actually found, here's how I knew. 
I loved talking to the actual people that I had on calls. I loved them. I'm like, oh my God, these are my people. They're wonderful. I want to know about them. I want to see how I can help them or if I can. I want them to make great decisions for themselves. So I was like, oh no, I'm still in integrity. I still do what I do and that's fine. What I hate is having in my mind this unreasonable number to attain that just feels arbitrary. And it, it felt arbitrary because it wasn't mine. And I thought about it and I was like, well, could I still push myself for this goal, even though it's not really something that I thought of for myself, just to try it and see if it changes my mind. Like if I actually hit it and I make it through the big push, would it become more normal for me? Could that make a huge difference in my life or business or whatever? And I went, all right, I'll try. And what I noticed is that with no feedback from the people who requested that goal of me, I felt worse and worse and worse about it. And it made me go, ah, okay. So if I'm trying to hit someone else's goal and they're not acknowledging me for trying to hit it, that makes me feel awful. I do not like it. And then my mind started spinning down the trail that it spins. And I went, okay, when have I done this with my weight, with like my hair, like just things that I show up and do or where, like how I show up in the world and what people see. How often have I adopted what I think someone else wants me to look like, to do, to enjoy, and tried to get on board and got along with it for whatever reason until it either felt normal or didn't, or I just moved on to something else to be concerned about. <laughs> and I went, oh my God, I have, I have in my life, I've done this. You know, I've gotten haircuts that other people recommended because they think I'll feel or look cuter or have better maintenance with that. And it's not what I really wanted to do. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. And then I thought again, like, when did I feel really like me again? When do I really feel like myself? And I guess the point of all of this is to say that there is definitely a felt difference in my body, in my mind, and in my heart, like a level of calm that comes from having my own input on my life and deciding what I actually like versus what I've been told to like, or I think I should like because someone else likes that and thinks it's a good idea for me. I've been growing my hair out since COVID happened and it's like long now and kind of curly and it's now hitting an annoying phase where it's not quite curling in the same way that it did when it was a little bit shorter and I need to make some decisions. But I have noticed like I just enjoy having it longer and I don't want to go back into a pixie cut. That was actually way more work <laughs> than I wanted. It was less on the day-to-day because -day you never had to style your hair. It was just too short to do anything with. But I, I like it the way it is now. And I don't think you could pay me to change it, which is interesting. And then I thought about this business decision and the pushing in the business and went, wait, I'm actually capable of pushing myself in my business. I don't actually need someone else to push me there. How interesting. And I've been operating for several years as though I need the input from other people in order to be successful or to even understand what success could be. And I completely don't believe that anymore. Now I'm like, no, I, I get to decide what success is. I actually do have a clue about what that feels like and what that means actually in my life. I understand what I want to do with my time, how I want my time to feel. I understand what flexibility I want. I understand what dollar amounts I want and what I feel that I'm worth and what I can deliver and feel really proud of for that price. I understand all of that and I got to create it on my own. Nobody needed to tell me how to do that. And yet I thought I needed it. How interesting. <laughs> and I'm tired of struggling to meet other people's goals that it seems like they just arbitrarily set for people to try to do. So anyway, I had a lot of feelings about it, as you can tell. And I'm curious if you were to think about your current inner drama, is it in any way related to trying to live up to a goal that actually isn't even yours? Is it an expectation of a boss or of a partner or of a child that's just not at all where you're coming from and it's not even what you want? And if so, why, why the struggle? Why are we trying to meet that demand? And does that person even notice or care that we're doing it? That's the other thing. I guess 
what I've realized from this whole experience is that I'm very willing to show up and push and work hard, even on things that are uncomfortable and even on things that I don't enjoy doing necessarily for praise, (laughs) for praise. And it's such a simple human emotion and need. It just, it makes me chuckle because I'm like, wow, we really will. We'll show up and we'll put like our lives and our energy on the line for a smile, for a word of encouragement, for someone saying, you know what, Blaze, you're doing a great job. And it occurred to me, I'm like, wow, that's all I actually really want from this whole experience is someone outside of myself to pat me on the back and go, Blaze, you're doing a great job. I'm so impressed with you. Look at you killing it. And that's what I wanted so desperately. And I was willing to almost overwrite my own law of how I want to interact and do things just for that that weird acknowledgement. So what I decided to do is to turn it around and figure out how I could give myself that acknowledgement to hear from myself, Blaze, wow, you're doing an amazing job. I'm so proud of you. It's amazing what you've accomplished and you can feel proud of it and keep going. Just keep going. What would you like to do, Blaze? What would you like to push yourself on? So at first, I... I'll be honest, like I started out just being angry and not even being able to see what I had been doing well. But the truth is like crazy things have happened in the last few months. Like my business has taken off. I'm really happy. It's as good as it's ever been. It's fabulous. I've enjoyed it. And then just having this one little, hey, try to do this even more than you normally do. Even more, even more made me feel like all of it was nothing. Like I hadn't done that well. It wasn't good enough. And I got stuck there and it felt bad. So even when I knew technically I should be really proud and I could say, oh, I'm really proud of myself, I did not feel it in my body. It was like a wall went up around my heart and it felt icy and cold and like rock there. And I was like, okay, I need to do something about this rock in my heart space around not acknowledging all of the hard work that I've done and how proud I actually am of myself so that I can actually feel it again so that I can keep moving forward and actually tackle my own goals. And it's funny, like they're intertwined. It's it's a very similar goal. It's just a different number. And I want to feel good about my numbers again. So a good friend of mine, we talked about this for a while on the phone and I poured my heart out and cried because that's what you do. And she said, Blaze, I'm going to give you an assignment like you do with me sometimes. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, okay, let's do this. And she said, could you write down where you were six months ago? And then just look at everything that's changed since then and start that list and see how much you've actually evolved and what you actually have accomplished in those six months, because it's remarkable. And maybe that'll help you find it and be able to feel it. So I went, oh, okay, I'll do that. And then you know what I did? I didn't do it. I did not take up the paper and write it because I was still punishing myself for not meeting these other people's goals. <laughs> so it took me like two or three days to finally go like, right, I really actually need to sit down and do this. And I did it this morning and I actually started like a monthly tally. So I started, like, okay, September, October, November, December, January, and February. And I wrote them out and I went, okay, where was I just in life in September? And if I look back, I'm like, okay, in September, I think I'd made like $400 in my business, like the whole year up to that point. Like it was really very tiny numbers, very sad. I'd spent thousands of dollars trying to turn that around or learning what the heck I could possibly do. But the truth is I was terrified that my child wouldn't actually go to school because I was worried about COVID and how the schools were going to run. So she's supposed to start kindergarten. Is she even going to go? I had no schedule. I had no one taking care of any of this stuff but me. So I had like no full-time clients. I was actually still suffering a lot of fear around like daily commute and driving, a lot of anxiety around that. Just there was a lot of things going on in life in general at that time. Health-wise, I think I weighed like five or 10 more pounds than I do now. So just, I was trying to like look at it all and be like, where actually were you in September? How happy were you? I was like, actually, I thought I was, but I was pretty stressed out. (laughs) And then let's go forward. So we get into October and I was like, oh, then October happened and I got invited to do a speaking at an online event. I signed my first full-time client. I signed a few new clients that were just one-off clients. Like it built a lot of belief in myself and what I could do. It was very exciting. So I did that. And 
my kid is going to school. I started to have an actual routine. I started redefining what it is I wanted. And then I, um, start, I found a new service really to connect with people that might actually want what I wanted. So I changed my whole advertising paradigm. I just, I moved everything. I shifted every single platform and then we get into November and I do the online speaking event. I pick up new clients. I pick up another client. I pick up some misaligned clients, which was interesting that I decided I could negotiate my rate and reduce rate for just to see so I could have more clients and see how that goes. And I tried it out. Um, I gave myself a spa day. It was lovely. So like things are on the up and up and then November happens and I get through November and I realize that not only am I signing new clients, but I'm starting to strip away like in December and January, the ones that are misaligned that aren't working, but I'm continually picking up new ones. And I actually know what I'm doing and what I like and that I enjoy it. And my belief went from, oh my God, I wonder if I'll be able to make $400 this year to it's inevitable that I'll make $4,000 a month. Like I have zero doubt that I can do that. I wonder if I could be making 10 or 20. Currently, I don't believe that, but you know what? Anything's possible because I 10 x it <laughs> just a few months. So we get to today and I'm like, oh, I've been invited for another speaker event, but this one's not online. This one's in person and it's like 50 or 100 people and I get to run a workshop and I get to like really do my thing. That's amazing. I have all these consults. They've been so much fun. I love my people. Like I love them. And as I did the exercise, I realized like, whoa, I'm in a place now where I know what I do. I have a schedule for it. I actually had to schedule in vacation times for myself throughout the year because I'm busy enough now that I need to schedule vacation time or I won't get it later. That's a freaking miracle. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to owe taxes this year. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm like the one person in the world who's like, woohoo, I get to pay taxes because it just for me means like I'm earning enough to contribute to society and that feels amazing. So you can even hear in my voice as I've gone through it, like, wow, like there's been an evolution. Things have changed. Like my numbers are big, like they're huge for me. But more than that, there's like a deep satisfaction in my lived experience of my life. And there's a confidence that wasn't there six months ago. And I'm not the person that I was then. And I've always been me, but I've grown. I've grown a lot. So then I look at it also and go, oh, like my health wise, I've like done the blood test work and I've got new supplements and I'm going walking every day and I'm feeling healthy. I've been working on my sleep. My house is like really clean. My kids are doing great. Like we went through COVID in December and now we're okay. <laughs> like just everything is on the up and up. That's success. I was like, I'm living. I'm already living it. I'm already living it. And it's okay for me to set, like push myself and to push for something that's uncomfortable for me to do. But I've finally, or again, recognized that I do it best when it comes from within me. I do it best when I reach out for help with a goal that I've already set and said, this is the goal that I set. How can you help me accomplish it? Versus someone else saying, you should try for this goal, just go do it. And I've also recognized once again, that huge human emotional tendency to just crave praise, crave approval, and just want it so badly from outside of ourselves. And I'm not immune. Like I want it really bad too. And I can raise my hand and go like, yes, I want the prize. I want the prize. I want the praise. But what I actually owe myself the most is to be able to find it and give it to myself. And when I can do that, I don't actually need it from anyone else. And then it's just like, it's icing, right? Then they, they can also shower me with praise, but I'm already on that party train and I want to just live on that party train. Ah, <sighs> yeah. So I know this one was a little longer than normal, but I wanted to just share that experience because I know that we all put ourselves in awkward, strange places, trying to accomplish things that aren't necessarily even what we want, or they, we think we want, but it actually isn't deeply what we want because we just want that love. We want that approval so much. So if that's where you've been recently in the past, you're still on that road. I just am giving you the biggest hug <laughs> and going, it's okay. What do you really want? What do you really want in your heart? And it's okay to admit that. And it does not have to be the same. It doesn't need to be the same 
goal as someone else. It doesn't need to be the same numbers as someone else. It doesn't have to be in the same timeline as someone else. It just needs to be you and you are allowed to have that and you should have that. And if there are people in your life telling you that what you want isn't good enough, then call me, (laughs) call me and we'll work on it because I think you know in your heart what you want and what's best for you. And I love helping people not only see it and illuminate it, but make it their reality. And you already have like so many amazing ideas of how it could happen or how it could get there. And I love just riffing on that and figuring out where there's even more that could come in and help and make it awesome. So that's what I'm doing for myself now. And honestly, it's a relief and it feels so good. (sighs) Happy goal setting, my friends. And please make it the goals and the timelines that you love and just enjoy the hell out of that process. I'll see you next week. Thanks so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and share it with someone you love and leave us a review. You can learn more and get some self-compassion tips and tricks by visiting coachwithblaze.com, where you can sign up to get my free booklet on overcoming anxiety, overwhelm, exhaustion, and burnout. I'm sending you so much appreciation and love, and I'll see you next time.